Hey everybody, E5 here and welcome back to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. So today we're taking a very quick look at the Black Reliquary version of the Musketeer. I've gotten quite a few questions about this class over the last few days, and that is almost certainly because if you happen to see our recent overview, or have jumped into BR yourself, you know that she is one of the four default classes that you get at the start of a new campaign, and she's one of the more interesting class reworks. But I also just think she's worth talking about because the BR team did a great job on her current design, it's a lot of fun to play, and I've always enjoyed trying the modded iterations of this character because she's just such a Red Hook original, you know, complete with her own comic backstory and all. Now we're just ahead of the Sands and Savages update in version 0.2 of BR, so things may change, but this particular Musketeer feels really well balanced around the mechanics of Black Reliquary, and I strongly believe that having a solid understanding of how to use her will give you a huge advantage in finding early success in your first campaign. Devastated. So the first thing to remember about characters in Black Reliquary is that they come off the stagecoach, or the blimp in this case, already level 1 apprentice with their primary kit unlocked, and character hit points and the stats of all abilities are doubled to better round out the scaling of abilities. Now keep in mind that BR also features this nifty hero info panel, which helps clarify things like important mechanics and information. In this case, should you give her repost, it will be a ranged attack with 90 accuracy and minus 60% damage. She can move back two spaces and forward one in combat, has a 5% crit as her crit buff, a 15% base virtue chance, and this includes a nice little basic summary of her adaptive ammo, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now this Apprentice Musketeer has 40 max HP, 5 dodge, 6 speed, 10 to 20 damage, 6 crit. That 40 HP seems high, but again, that is just due to the way that everything is doubled here uh, in Black Reliquary. If we just take a look at the Apprentice Arbalist, this is just a little bit less than the max HP of the Apprentice Arbalist, and about the same stats, but she has no dodge and a little bit less damage than our Musketeer. So they're really pretty similar. So there's nothing really interesting to take a look at with the resistances. You know, dis Trap Disarm, 60% base. Uh, death Blow, high because all characters in BR start at the high 87. And then throughout the dungeon, this drops as they get, uh, you know, successively taken to Death Door or have Death Door checks. Uh, so the really important thing with this class is to jump right into the kit and look at this right here. This is Change Ammo. It is a free action usable in any position. And this is the core concept and mechanic of the Musketeer in Black Reliquary, the notion that she has three different types of ammunition that she can choose from and load into her musket at any time. And a little detail I love is that if you just look at the design of the Musketeer, she's got these three different bags of ammunition on her belt. The second you load into a dungeon, you'll see the different icons of ammunition over her head, the standard ammo being the orange, which is generally, you know, high damage and armor piercing, the red icon, which is the shrapnel ammunition, which tends to have bleed effects, and then the yellow concussive shot, which tends to have debuff and stun effects. Nonetheless, once you understand that she's changing ammunition, you sort of get used to that, uh, that will help you be less intimidated or overwhelmed by just the amount of information on each of these abilities. So let's take a look at standard shot, which is her primary ranged attack, usable in rank 3 or 4, it attacks an enemy in 2, 3, or 4, accuracy base 95, 5% crit modifier. If you load standard ammo, has 30% armor piercing. If you load shrapnel, will bleed 4 over 3 and has a little bit less damage. And if you load the concussive ammunition, will debuff the target for stun resist. Devastation. So next in her kit is Smokescreen. This is a ranged attack, usable in three or four. It targets the back three enemies. Accuracy base 100, no damage with a minus 100% damage modifier. And very importantly, this is the one ability she has that gets around the preparation round. So you have to remember that in Black Reliquary, the first round of combat is always the prep round, which significantly limits accuracy and crit ability and incentivizes you to sort of use debuffs or support abilities instead. And in this case, using Smokescreen ignores the preparation round so that if you use standard ammunition, will debuff the back three for prod and accuracy. If you load Shrapnel, will deal four damage at level one to all enemies. And if you load the concussive ammo, 
has a 60% base chance to add shuffle to the back three enemies for three rounds and debuff their move resist. Really great against enemies that are rank dependent. So next in is her Buckshot, which is usable in rank 1, 2, or 3. It attacks both front enemies. There's a ranged attack with accuracy base 90, minus 60% damage, 2% crit. It has a cooldown for one round, so you can only use this once every other turn. With standard ammo, it does 40% extra damage and 100% armor piercing. With shrapnel, it's going to bleed both for 3 over 3 and debuff the targets for plus 6% crits received. And if you use concussive ammo, it's sort of like the Hellion's Yop. It has a chance to stun both at 100% base at level 1. So then we have Bombard. This is a ranged attack which hits the entire enemy team, usable in rank 3 or 4. Accuracy base 90, damage modifier minus 75%. A crit modifier of 3. It cannot be reposted. If you have the standard ammunition, it will break guard. Shrapnel will add 75% damage, and concussive ammo will debuff the entire team for minus 8 dodge and minus 4 accuracy. So that brings us then to Patch Up, which is her heal ability. This is very much like the Arbalist's heal. It's usable in rank 3 or 4. It has a 30% healing buff against targets below 40% max HP and is available with any ammo. So the both of these sort of not dependent on this, but this you'll see is just very much like the Arbalist heal. And finally, we have Stock Strike, which is her only melee attack, usable in rank one or two. It attacks an enemy in rank one or two. This will send her to the back line Accuracy base 85, crit modifier pretty high at 8%, also usable with any ammunition, and it will buff herself for 6 speed. So I think the really important thing to think about is that if you're just learning how to play her and you just take her in off the stagecoach, you know, a build like this is probably the way to do it. That allows you to sort of play with a different ammunition, and then, you know, take your take the different shots that you need to, which is sort of bread and butter, have something to do during the preparation round. And then, you know, if you sit her in position three, which is where I think she really belongs, you can still use buckshot and, you know, get those hits in on the front ranks and use that every other round with that one that one round cooldown. So an advanced way to think about her build is to recognize that the ammunition you choose is persistent between combats, meaning that if you start to feel confident using her and you plan to head to say, the exposed interior dungeon at daytime where bleed is fairly effective, you could opt to swap into shrapnel round on the first combat and afterward, you know, let go of change ammo and swap into something else and just ride shrapnel ammo as long as you want through the rest of the dungeon. So while I think keeping change ammo is useful 90% of the time and especially as you know you're getting to know the dungeons and the characters better, it's definitely not mandatory all of the time. And then lastly, I would just think about equipping stock strike if you're ever you know, vulnerable to being shuffled, you know, against a certain boss or something that's going to be shuffling you, then it's nice to have this on your kit. And if you're really just starting to take a bunch of damage, then, you know, switch something out so that you have patch up. So when thinking about her camping utility, you should probably have at least both of these unlocked because these are pretty good. You know, Scout is a time cost too, self only 15% scouting chance. Now, Scout is significantly nerfed in BR compared to the vanilla game. Uh, but this is still pretty useful for a time cost too, as is Hobby, you know, the self only minus 20 stress. So both of these are pretty good to go. Um, and then, you know, you could just take clean musket and that's your time cost three and just massive ranged buffs, you know, take the cleansing salt and get rid of that minus four speed. Um, but if you have more things unlocked, you could go for the champion's ego, you know, de-stress her for 30 at the cost of stressing out the rest of your team. Um, and, you know, make her a stronger healer with triage, the time costs three, 40% healing skills, and, you know, buff your companions who have mortality debuffs for healing received and bleed resist. Now, Amber Infused Powder is very efficient at a time cost one, but had me confused initially because it buffs mark and debuff chance and resist. 
but this is a ranged class with no mark synergy. And that is because in BR, mark is considered a debuff, which is resistible. So Powder is simply buffing her chance to land debuffs and resisting enemy debuffs and marks. Now, trinkets are pretty different in Black Reliquary from the base game just because they don't tend to come with many negatives. I mean, if you find something like the Archer's Ring, it can be absolutely amazing early on uh, for obvious reasons. You could also find something like the Snake Vial and just add on to the armor piercing of your standard ammo. I really like, you know, using a Bleedstone or something like that to help, uh, you know, help improve what she's doing with her shrapnel rounds. And there are some pretty fun mechanical trinkets down the line. The Vengeful Boots which on miss buff self for bombard damage, the medic's boots, which give healing bonuses versus bleeding and cure bleed. You have the sniper's hat, which buffs us in rank four only. The skirmisher's hat, which really makes uh, using stock strike a completely different kind of attack. And the icosahedric musket balls, the crystalline 20% damage, but also a 20% chance to hit a random enemy target. So there's definitely some some ways that you can play with her and have a little bit of fun. You know, the other thing that is worth mentioning, though, is her religious affiliation. Let's just take a look real quick. Bassard. Yeah. OK, so here we go. So here we unfortunately we have an affliction on this veteran musketeer, but this is just such a kick butt musketeer. Wildland skirmisher and slayer, quick draw, deadly, even risk taker for the 5% damage, but also pagan. And that is sort of the point I'm getting to. The religious affiliations tend to sort of archetype so that pagan are more damage dealy and DPS and religious tend to be a little bit more defensive and sort of, you know, uh, tanky or healing. So to roll, you know, a, a pagan affiliation with a musketeer can be really great. If we look at, you know, comboing that with adjudicator, Glassworks is going to buff a pagan character for 15% damage and six crit as divided loyalties also does a time cost to accuracy and crit of pagan. So I think Pagan is kind of the way you want to go if you have something that's a really dedicated damage dealer, uh, but it's not game breaking. It's not character. You know, you're not going to toss her out if she's not Pagan. It's just nice to have. So that is going to do for this brief overview of the BR Musketeer. I hope you guys have found this helpful. You know, it is my sincere belief that if you just get a handle on this class, it really, really helps in, you know, sort of building a bit of success and wealth at the beginning of your first campaign. And that is my goal is to sort of help you guys uh, understand some of these systems and mechanics and have fun with this class. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this particular iteration of the Musketeer. So far, I'm having a lot of fun with it, uh, but it's taken me just a little bit of time to become really good at it. And while she does not have a base game version available, remember that installing BR is quite easy. Just follow the link below the video, install the overhaul into a new save file with no other mods loaded, and you should be good to go. Do make sure to subscribe for more Black Reliquary mods and everything else Darkest Dungeon. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.